Hi, I'm Elena Claw. I am in the psychology department. I'm a professor and I've been here for 19 years. And about half time, I serve as the director of the Center for Community Learning and Leadership here at San Jose State. We're talking about trying to understand our student veterans today and their learning needs. Can you give us some background information about student veterans? Absolutely. So let's talk about who are our college student veterans. What do we know? We know that at this point, about 2.5 million US military members have served as part of what we call the global war on terror, including service in Iraq, which is known as OIF, Operation Iraqi Freedom, and in Afghanistan, known as OEF, Operation Enduring Freedom. So generally post 9-11 veterans are referred to as OIF, OEF veterans, and that's primarily who we serve at San Jose State. Currently veterans make up about 4% of all undergraduate students. 80% of the vets who return to California first attend community colleges. Then, overall, nearly two-thirds of student vets we know enroll in public universities like San Jose State. Forty percent of our student veterans have disabilities. Thirty-two percent note having physical disabilities, and twelve percent note having post-traumatic stress disorder, which, of course, we need to recognize as a continuum of stress responses with the smaller percentage qualifying for having post-traumatic stress disorder, but perhaps a majority suffering from stress related to combat, acculturation, deployment, or the transition related to coming home. Some researchers estimate that perhaps the majority of veterans who've served on the, in the global war on terror have minor traumatic brain injuries, meaning that because of their exposure to improvised explosive devices, they've experienced concussions which can affect their brain functioning. So I know you have done lots of research, Elena. Can you tell us a little bit about your um, findings from your research? Absolutely. I began this work with a colleague and we received a grant to look at college student veterans' risk for violence in relationships and whether they were experiencing healthy relationships. We surveyed student veterans across California colleges, meaning that we had a pretty high functioning sample of veterans because these were all veterans who were enrolled in college, veterans who were willing to complete a survey, veterans who had access to the technology to complete a survey online, and veterans who reported that they were currently involved in an intimate relationship. So again, our findings don't represent all veterans or all veterans of the United States or veterans of this era. So particularly, it's student veterans who are in a relationship. So what did we find? On average, student veterans in California did not report on standardized scales that they were clinically anxious or depressed. However, many reported symptoms of distress far beyond what we would expect a general population of college students to report. So for example, if you look at the items in red, 65% on a Likert scale endorsed that they worry too much about things. 34% said they have scary thoughts and images. So those are items associated with anxiety and possibly post-traumatic stress disorder. In blue, we see that 51% of our respondents endorsed having low energy or feeling slowed down. 43% endorsed that they blame themselves for things. 39% endorse the item that they feel blue and that they have a loss of interest in things. Now those items are associated with clinical depression. So those are pretty high rates of endorsement of distress. 
So I then conducted seven discussion groups of veterans, or about seven people per discussion group, to find out about their experiences at San Jose State. And what I found back then, it was um, 2010, 2011, was that veterans reported feeling lonely. And they said that they felt at the university that no one cared. Mm -hmm. They also discussed that they wanted a sense of mission, mm -hmm. similar to what they had in the military. So as a result of these findings, the combined quantitative and particularly the qualitative findings, I developed a class entitled Warriors at Home that focused on the transition home for veterans and how to have success in, in college, in relationships, and in life. And out of that, I developed the Vet Connect Peer Leadership Program. Vet Connect stands for Veterans Embracing Transition, and I'll tell you more about that. So nationally, what we know is that student veterans are actually less likely than their peers to be engaged in their college experience. They report that they're less satisfied with their college experience, and they're actually at greater risk of dropout compared to their non-military peers. Although it does appear that this is at about the same rate as other non-traditional students. The good news is several programs that support student veterans, including a beautiful Veterans Resource Center right in the Student Union, the Vet Connect program I mentioned, mm -hmm. the Accessible Education Center has services tailored towards veterans, the Career Center has services tailored towards veterans, Counseling and Psychological Services mm -hmm. has trained professionals to work with veterans in particular, and the Health and Wellness Center. Mm -hmm. So my own program is this Vet Connect, Veterans Embracing Transition, has a research and a peer leadership component. And the peer leadership program now has involved um, actually over 30 students because we're finishing another semester. And the idea of this program is that student veterans design and implement projects based on their own interests that serve veterans and educate the campus and community about the needs and perspectives of veterans, of military students and their families. So I don't develop and design the projects. I work with students across disciplines. For example, several student filmmakers have come through the program and have developed films about the needs, journeys, and experiences of student veterans. I work with student veterans who are artists, student veterans who are researchers, student veterans who are public speakers, student veterans who are interested in applying psychology, and student veterans who are writers. So veterans can mm -hmm. choose the way in which they want to serve the campus community, educating them about the needs and perspectives of veterans. So in a small qualitative study of graduates of the Vet Connect program, our alumni, we found that Vet Connect does seem to reduce the isolation that is so common to student veterans' experiences. So we, um, I did this study with three Marines. So it's myself, Jemerson Diaz, Rafael Avalos, and Kachun Lee, all um, U.S. Marine Corps and SJSU veterans. Um, and they conducted interviews with fellow veterans, which were recorded, and we were able to pull out themes that we all agreed on. So the transcripts revealed that 100% of the participants that were interviewed of this group of 13 reported that they gained increased connection from participating as a peer leader in the Vet Connect program. So they became more connected to other student veterans, the mm -hmm. students with whom they worked, to non-military students by being in classes with them, like the Warriors at Home class, or by educating them or co-participating in tabling or in events such as the suicide prevention event mm -hmm. on campus, to faculty, obviously particularly to me, and to staff by getting to know resources and helping to support resources at times such as the Career Center and the Accessible Education Center. Mm -hmm. uh, 100% reported that through participation as a peer leader, they increased their own self-growth 
and integration into civilian society. How did they do this? They felt they developed skills, both personal coping skills, for example, what to do when they got angry or mm -hmm. stressed mm -hmm. or didn't know how to communicate, skills such as public presentation, collaboration, mm -hmm. serving on a team for, with an academic project in which perhaps the other members were not veterans and did not possess the same set of skills and work ethos and ethics as the veterans. They noted gaining self-insight. For example, saying things like, I never knew why I would get so angry. I never knew why I would shut down. I never knew why I was at risk for drinking at certain times. As part of that, they also noted gaining self-acceptance, meaning that they could understand that their coping styles, which might not have been serving them anymore, were a result of having experienced trauma. In some cases, combat, in some cases, a sense of helplessness, in some cases, accepting how hard it was to leave their buddies sometimes to lose their buddies and to come to San Jose State where sometimes they felt purposeless. Sometimes they felt that nobody understood them. So they could understand the coping skills that they developed, which may or may not have been healthy in the context of the stress that they were experiencing. So that provided a sense of relief for those participants. 100% revealed that serving as a peer leader, increase their sense of purpose or sense of mission, if you will, so that through their participation as a Vet Connect peer leader, they were able to serve and help others, particularly fellow veterans, which was very important to them to be of support to other student veterans. They used this quote, they were able to make a difference and that felt good and that they felt needed. And remember, that's what we all need to feel. And students who served in the military had a tremendous sense of mission, a sense of purpose, a sense of camaraderie and loyalty. And they had lost all that often when coming home. And so participation in peer leadership helped to restore some of that sense for those participants. So recently, we decided that it had been a while since the VET team looked at how student veterans are perceiving the campus climate. So campus climate is generally defined as, do you find the environment welcoming, conducive to your engagement? Do you wanna be there or do you, on the opposite side, do you find the climate hostile and unwelcoming? So since we hadn't really looked at those variables for a while since since implementing all these efforts, we actually were hoping that things had improved for student veterans. Mm -hmm. So here's the good news. First of all, it is a small sample because we were reliant on people who came to the Veteran Resource Center. And so in some ways we do have to admit we oversampled people who were involved because those were the only people who responded to the survey. That being said, of the 60 participants who responded to our survey, over half, 56%, describe the university's social climate as welcoming or very welcoming on a scale. Mm -hmm. And 60% expressed on this scale that they felt comfortable discussing service-related topics with both military and civilian students. Our findings also indicate that student veterans who use on-campus veteran resources like the Veteran Resource Center and the AEC, and are involved in student veteran activities like our veteran student organization and Vet Connect peer leadership program, are more likely to perceive the current campus climate as welcoming. They're more likely to socialize with fellow students. They're more academically engaged, which is really our best proxy variable mm -hmm. for likelihood mm -hmm. to graduate, to mm -hmm. stay on in academics. Mm -hmm. And they report, but that's encouraging that what we're doing is certainly a step in the right direction mm -hmm. to supporting our student veterans, both emotionally and academically. And of course, those two are linked when we look at success and graduation. 
The current findings also reveal that student veterans who are satisfied with articulation and advising procedures in particular mm -hmm. place higher value on earning a bachelor's degree and perceive their education to be crucial for future employment. So we'll talk more about mm -hmm. administrative policies and procedures. So students were concerned mm -hmm. that sometimes administrative policies and procedures were barriers for them, particularly as veterans. So this student, this is a quote from the transcript, said mm -hmm. there could be more understanding of the implications of not being able to register for classes or units because of technical mm -hmm. issues with regard to possible delay in receiving our housing allowance from our GI benefits. Mm -hmm specifically mm. within the office of the registrar. So mm. that was a repeated concern. Mm. So here's a suggestion that a student veteran had that was a prototypical, mm. a support for helping to integrate veterans. Develop projects where civilian students and student veterans have to collaborate for successful mm. interactions. So that speaks somewhat to the mission of the Vet Connect program where student veterans either work with or educate non-veteran students in collaborative projects. It also speaks to programs like service learning where whoever the student is in the class, they are part of a team that works for the benefit of the community as part of their course curriculum and as part of what they're learning. So to conclude, overall, our findings suggest that student veterans benefit from targeted services, resources, and peer leadership activities that are particularly designed to benefit veterans, right? Mm -hmm. As well as from st streamlined administrative procedures. Those, so things like priority registration, additional advising and financial mm -hmm. aid, additional advising related to being on path to graduate, that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And some a final concluding thought is that veterans themselves are the experts on their own experiences. So I can give you statistics and study findings and the results of my program, but what we need to do consistently is through both qualitative and quantitative methods, through our own student satisfaction surveys, and through our contacts as faculty and staff seek to understand the students that we're serving. And we can only do that through, as we know, open communication, having available mm -hmm. office time to talk mm -hmm. to them, mm -hmm. and making a point to let students know that regardless of who they are or where they come from, we are here to serve them and here to help.